Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Soap Queen TV. In this episode, I'm going to be making a really fun bar of soap using Brambleberry.com's exclusive silicone column mold. This technique is called a faux funnel pour and when it's combined with the unique nature of this round column mold, produces a soap that is a little out of this world. Now, if you've never made cold process soap before, stop right now and watch the first four episodes of Soap Queen TV on cold process soap making or just read the first few chapters of my book, Soap Crafting. It's important that we soap safely, especially with this advanced soap making technique. For today's batch, we're going to be using a fruity fun combination of kumquat fragrance oil and lime fragrance oil from Brambleberry.com. Whatever essential oil or fragrance oil blend you use, it's important that you utilize a blend that gives you a long time to work with the soap. It takes about five to seven minutes of pouring time just to make this soap. Before we get started soap making, it's important to disperse our colorants in a little bit of lightweight oil like sunflower oil. For more information on dispersing colorants, watch my Soap Queen TV short called Dispersing Colorants. In separate containers, add one teaspoon of brick red oxide, one teaspoon of electric bubble gum pigment, one teaspoon of ultramarine blue oxide, and one teaspoon of hydrated chrome green oxide, and finally, one teaspoon of titanium dioxide into one tablespoon of sunflower oil or another lightweight oil. Make sure when you're doing this that you put the tip of your handy dandy little mini mixer all the way to the bottom and that there's no free floating pigments on the top because if you turn that mixer on, poof, it goes everywhere and you get color all over the place. For this recipe, it's chock full of liquid oils to give myself the most working time with the recipe. I'm using canola oil, rice bran oil, sweet almond oil, coconut oil, palm oil, and avocado oil. The reason I'm not using any olive oil in this recipe is because olive oil sometimes gives your soap a little more yellow or greenish tint and I want my colors to be as clean and crisp as possible. This silicone mold rocks. It actually holds water. That's how airtight these seals are. In fact, let me show you. And see, no leakage. Because of the thin, thin trace I'm working with with this recipe, I'm just gonna put some binder clips on for a little extra precaution. I'm really manipulating and moving the mold a lot since I'm tamping down a little bit to get rid of air bubbles throughout the process. And pff, the last thing I want is a soapy prison break. Now it's time to suit up for safety. Notice I am wearing long sleeves and putting on my gloves. If you have any children or pets around, now is the time to put them in another room. And finally, Goggles. Always soap in a well-ventilated area. If you're at all susceptible to live fumes, feel free to use a full face mask or a full cover. Silicone molds are awesome to work with because they help with the ease of unmolding. But because of the vacuum they create, it does take a few extra days to unmold them. I like to use sodium lactate to help unmolding. Sodium lactate is the sodium salt of lactic acid. It's a common food preservative and it facilitates the hardening of soap for ease of unmolding. The usage rate is one teaspoon per pound of oils. I'm adding two teaspoons of sodium lactate to my lye water. And then I'm gonna take my lye water with the sodium lactate in it and just pour it gently down the shaft of the stick blender. I should mention the sodium lactate is a totally optional step. I just like to use it because it makes for a harder, shinier bar. We wanna make sure that we have as many bubbles out before we start stick blending. So just burp that stick blender by tapping it on the bottom. And whoop. There goes the bubbles. Stick blend until you're just lightly emulsified or a very light trace. Now split this open to four equal parts. I just eyeball it. Now it's time to add the colorants to the soap. I like to add my colors in order of lightest to darkest. So go ahead and add one teaspoon of titanium dioxide to this container and then one half teaspoon of titanium dioxide to this container. Then three fourths teaspoon of electric bubble gum goes in its very own separate container. Then one half teaspoon of hydrated chrome green goes into the container that already has one half teaspoon of titanium dioxide. Next, add one teaspoon of ultramarine blue oxide into the container that already has one teaspoon of titanium dioxide. 
And finally, one half teaspoon of brick red oxide goes all by itself. Whisk these in in order of lightest to darkest, so you have less whisks to have to wash. And then add fragrance oil to each colorant. I did about 0.4 ounces per portion. Whisk this in. And then line up your containers in the order you're going to be pouring into your mold. I've lined up mine up for maximum contrast. Okay, here we go. Aim for the center of the mold and count to three as you pour. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then now this is over, gently sort of jiggle a little bit, tamp down just a little bit. We want any air bubbles to come up so they don't create little unattractive white spots in your soap. Now, continue to do this until your mold is filled up. Keep pouring down the center. I love these easy pouring containers from Brambleberry.com because they really allow me to have precise design. Wow, this looks so pretty, I can hardly wait to cut it. But I do have at least five to nine days to wait because since I'm using a silicone mold, it does take a few extra days longer to release it, but it's totally worth it. Gently, gently, gently move your soap from the table to someplace that it can remain undisturbed for three to five days. It's your preference whether you want this to go through gel phase or not. Now it's time to unmold. So remove those binder clips and then gradually and gently start to peel open the side. How is it looking? Is it tearing? If it's tearing, wait another couple days. Okay, this is looking okay. Whew. And then work on the other side. Ha, huh. good, it's out and it looks so pretty. I love the contrast of the blue and the pink and the green and I bet when I start cutting into this, no two bars are gonna look alike. Using a non-serrated knife, cut firmly down. Oh, so pretty, I love those concentric circles. If you get drag marks when you're cutting this soap, it just means it's a little too soft to cut still. So put it aside for a few days and then try again. Once you have all your bars cut, set them aside on a drying rack for four to six weeks before selling, using, or giving them away. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Faux Funnel Pour Cold Process Soap. Until next time, happy soaping! Music